Welcome to Reality Recap powered by Crosscom. We've got some fun stories today covering some new big players in the metaverse, how VR is bringing the conflict in Ukraine home, and more. So let's get started. First off, HTC Vive announced at the end of February that they're officially entering the metaverse race with their own virtual space. They're calling it the Viveverse. This world includes games, apps, and more, and is accessible via smartphone, PC, tablet, and their Vive Flow VR glasses. The idea being an open-ended universe where users can travel between different worlds sharing one identity. This seems like it's probably a pretty good move for the industry. It's a step in the right direction, especially as it sounds like Vive and you know, HTC is interested in bringing together other industry players to support this cross-platform ecosystem. I think that, um, so I am cautiously optimistic. I still do have some concerns. Firstly, uh, HTC is a little bit behind the eight ball at this point. They haven't gotten as much momentum uh, uh, with um, their hardware or with the Steam VR platform as uh, the, the meta VR juggernaut. My second concern is that, and this has to do with the lack of traction by any other player besides Facebook and Oculus, is that um, you know, they're, they're, they, they threw out a video and they threw out a bunch of hot keywords like NFTs and all sorts of other stuff. And the cynical side of me wants to see more than just a video trying to get attention by jumping on the bandwagon and producing something and involving every other hot topic of the day from blockchain to nfts to this and to that um and i'm really really excited about the mention in um in the press about this being not just cross-platform but open source because that's what i think it needs to be in order to be um i think an industry standard i hate the name viveverse is very specific to them um and I don't think it's it's really conducive to that spirit of having some kind of open metaverse. But it's still, for all we know, vaporware. Um, I can't find any open source repositories, uh, any kind of evidence uh, of, you know. So, again, cautiously optimistic. I hope there is substance behind this, but I need to see more. I mean, we've seen so many people just throw out words like crypto and blockchain. And we've seen it so often. I mean, we need to see something real. And until I actually see repos out and an editor app out or anything of that sort, as a developer, I'm not going to be excited about someone else coming out with the metaverse. And we've seen, like, we've seen uh, the start of Meta's metaverse. We've seen Horizons, but Meta does own what 70% share on Steam now for Quest 2 for headsets, and Vibe is around at like 13 or 14, if I'm not wrong. So hopefully when Vive do bring it out, they'll be compatible with the Quest 2. A lot to still unpack there with the Vive verse, but things seem to be pretty positive for now. Changing directions though, we're going to talk a little bit about a tougher topic, the conflict currently going on in Ukraine. Multiple immersive experiences are now bringing home the, the real, real horrifying experience that's happening there bringing it into perspective for those of us across the Western world. Now, from a Steam game that lets you walk through a war as a civilian, from that perspective, getting separated from family members, things like that, to immersive games and experiences from a Ukrainian producer of the 2014 Ukrainian Civil War and now some new updates to that, to an AR app, Reface, using their platform to educate users and drive pro-Ukrainian sentiment, we're seeing a whole new era of bringing these horrors of war back home and making things more real. This is similar to the power that radio and then TV once had, and now it's falling into the AR and VR space. According to Don, it's at an even more impactful scale than those original technologies. One of the superpowers of VR is its ability to generate empathy and its ability to offer opportunities for role play situational role play that would be physically and, um, and experientially impossible. And I think there's a real opportunity for simulation and for journalism to leverage immersive VR 
as a way to um, help people understand and feel and experience what's going on. I think with with the control of media and the control of digital media, you're having large segments of the global population just consuming um, a different understanding of reality. And, you know, I'm wondering if the use of photogrammetry or um, some kind of 3D scans could not only serve as a way to document what is going on for posterity's sake and for the sake of future generations being able to see these kind of scenarios and what really happened, but also for a way to allow um, what's going on in Ukraine to hit home to Russians living in Moscow and in St. Petersburg and, and elsewhere. Moving to Big M Meta now, they are testing an AI system in their Horizons worlds that lets people construct parts of their virtual worlds with just audible descriptions. It's called BuilderBot, and the idea is that you're lowering the bar for creating these personalized experiences in Horizons uh, while also driving AI tech. So this could be super broad, like let's go to the beach, all the way down to adding specific clouds or music tracks or changing the amount of sunlight. It's not the first word to art AI, but it is the first to do this at a major scale, especially in 3D. Now, Don found the idea of using speech commands for subjective matter like art very interesting, though not really art. But Yush is pretty excited about the potential this has for everyday users. The tech behind this excites me because I've been following NVIDIA's uh, image generation stuff for a while. And I'm surprised they've got it in so early inside Horizons working as a prototype. Now, I know like it's not creative or it's not going to be actually art. I understand that, but for the general user, it's going to be useful, right? Like Don, you, me, and our team went into Horizons. We made a world for ourselves. We tried stuff out with visual scripting, but the text-to-speech aspect is going to be super useful for people who can't do that, right? One final story here, looking at web browsing in AR and VR. Mozilla officially retired uh, their AR VR version of Firefox. It was a, a useful free software. Um, they are handing it off to software consultancy Egalia, developing a new browser using the same source code from Firefox Reality and launching it under a new name called Volvic. Um, this is free and open still. They're for use on headsets, web AR. Uh, this, is, this is usually a pretty good sign to see more free and open players, though taking it out from under the Mozilla uh, umbrella has caused a little bit of concern for our guys. I think it's too early for me to have an opinion on whether that's, uh, you know, how it's all going to turn out. But I can tell you what my 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 concerns are. Um, you know, I I I would love to have been a fly on the wall that led to this decision. Um, if it was funding, if it was part of, uh, if it was part strategy, if it was a combination of it all. Um, I am certainly glad and grateful that the, um, the app and the software will continue to have life under, um, a new caretaker. So that is a positive, um, you know, and I guess the whole story as a whole is positive. Um, I do think it's unfortunate that it's not going to have the Firefox brand because I do think that being Firefox, uh, and associated with, uh, that, um, certainly lowers the barrier of entry to risk adverse organizations. Um, and um, I think that uh, whenever you have new technology, lowering risk is always uh, good for adoption. So that's, um, that's kind of a downer. Uh, but again, I think overall, glad someone's taking care of the code base. Uh, it's just unfortunate that's not going to be uh, Mozilla Firefox. I kind of see it in a good way um, that we have one dedicated platform now like at least for developers, now we can focus on that one dedicated platform and not have to deal with anything that Firefox has to do or Chrome has to do in their regular updates of their browsers. And all the updates that come through will be WebEx related. And this is just a start for the push towards going towards WebEx which which seems pretty cool. All right, that wraps it up for this episode of Reality Recap powered by Crosscom. As always, 
Thank you guys for watching. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe, comment, tell us what other stuff, stuff you want to see, uh, share it with your friends and family, any of that. We love being heard by different folks. Thanks, y'all. Be good.